Welcome back, folks, to Let's Replay Albion. And when last we left off, we've completely explored this floor, which is a good thing, because we can't go back there anymore. The door leading to the level has been tightly bolted, and the only way we can go now is down a hole that a flame made as it moved down the corridor to try and burn us. The floor here is very weak, and Miss Cave-In is certainly going to work to our benefit. We have plenty of coils of rope, we have three specifically, so we're not going to have any difficulty navigating down. And the reason why I've switched to Tom is because this area is the final 3D dungeon of Kamulon. Let's go. Tom looks around. This is obviously an inhabited part of Kamulon. Already, things are starting to look up. We're in luck. The cave-in has led us directly to the inner region. We're near the main entrance. Orbakengit will immediately attack us here. Well, they have been attacking us all the way through Kamulon, but then again, apart from one area, we really weren't welcome, so that makes sense, and we're not welcome here, that's for sure. I will give you directions to the doors which lead us right to where they store the high knowledge. And we don't want to go south to start with, because uh, south doesn't lead to where we want to go. This is the main entrance to the inner region. The door is usually locked, and today is a usual day. The door is locked, and we're not given an opportunity to unlock it. And here is a single encounter with one magician. It doesn't trigger until we get into uh, visibility range of the uh, magician, which is a good thing, as it gives you an opportunity to rest and to uh, consider where you're going. One thing we do want to do here, however, is not to use a frost splinter or a frost crystal like we normally do. We're going to be using Thorn Snare. Thorn Snare is a spell that we really haven't been leveling that much, or at all. And we're going to need to get this spell maximized if we're going to be uh, having a good chance at the final encounter of uh, Kamulon. Because the final encounter, much like the Beastmaster, is immune to frost magic. Unfortunately, Thorn Snare being at such a low level means that we're going to have to cast this spell a lot. And fortunately for us, we have more than enough uh, spell potions and the ability to rest, which means that we can uh, quite safely level up this spell. We do need to get some hits in against this magician though, just in case uh, the magician casts a spell or two. Thorn Snare works a lot like um, the Frost uh, spells, but it doesn't deal any damage. It does, however, hold an enemy for quite a lot longer. And there is a fireball. Aim directly at Syra, which doesn't really do that much whatsoever. We are going to be consuming our uh, life points to cast various spells here, like the Thorn Snares, because we do have a lot of healing on hand, and we can quite safely uh, restore health with potions if we need to. This magician isn't going to be lasting very long, which is a good thing, and uh, already we have Thorn Snare up to that level of proficiency, which is good. It's not yet working against a magician, but it is at a very high level of proficiency. We could get Harriet to um, restore Syrah's health after this encounter. There we go. Just in case, nope, it hasn't yet worked, which means the magician is going to move around. There we go. And I think we'll cast it one more time. How much? Uh, 53 life points. Yeah, we'll cast it one more time. There we go. 23 health per casting, and now it worked. And you'll see that uh, it holds the enemy in place, which is a really good thing indeed. That enemy is not going to be doing any moving whatsoever, and so this enemy is pretty much doomed. Well, the enemy was pretty much doomed anyway, because it was just one solitary magician. But hey, already it's a quite a respectable level. It's nearly about a third of the way through. We're going to be doing some healing now, though. A, a bit of healing here. There we go. And we're going to have to get you to uh, drink a few potions. You might as well drink the weaker ones first, because uh, they reduce the amount of stuff you're carrying. And while we're thinking about carrying things, we need to drop quite a few items. Mainly, we need to drop a lot of scrolls that we're just carrying for no particular reason. The main reason we're doing that is because uh, we need to make a lot of inventory space for uh, the encounters that we're going to be facing here. Unlike the floor that we were previously on, we're going to be facing a lot of the uh, Cledo Camulos and the Magicians. Now, we don't really take items from the Magicians, but we do take quite a lot of things from the uh, Cledo Camulos. Mainly, we take all of the uh, Bolt Throwers that they have, because they're going to sell for a lot of 
money. We also want to get rid of this helmet. It may give us quite a lot of protection, but it indeed is cursed, so uh, we're not even going to entertain using it. There we go, and one more scroll going there. Did we get rid of the uh, scroll up here? No, we didn't, because that is Demon Exodus, and that is a really good scroll. There we go, we'll get rid of these ones here. But getting rid of them from Thunag really isn't that important, because uh, we have the opportunity soon to get rid of Thunag from our party. And I'm definitely going to be considering that. Uh, just drop this here, and we'll drop that there. There we go. And we might as well save, now I've got rid of all of those items from our inventory. It can't hurt, can it? Let's just save here. There we go. We can go, I've no idea what number there I saved us, we can go the wrong way, which is here. Don't go this way. This door does not lead to the room where the high knowledge is stored. We could go here anyway, and then we could even go this way, which really is the wrong route. Don't go this way. This door does not lead to the room where the high knowledge is stored. And in here is another thing that is said. All doors leading from this hall go to the inner area's library rooms. They're usually well visited. Get ready for attacks, and there is an attack with a brog that we are most certainly going to avoid, because we don't want to go that way. Going that way would be a good opportunity to uh, level up uh, Thorns there, but we'd rather do it going the right way. This is the right door, it leads to the Room of the High Knowledge. It also leads to quite a few encounters that we're going to have to deal with. For instance, there's an encounter over here. Yeah, I think it's uh, three Magician 2s? Yep, it is three Magician 2s that we're going to have to take care of. And we are going to start this one off with a Frost Avalanche, because even though we're trying to uh, level up the uh, Thorn Snare, we want to make sure that these enemies don't run around and cause us any trouble. There we go, some uh, ranged attacks there. And there we go, these enemies are not going anywhere. Which is good, because that gives uh, Sira time to practice the uh, Thorn Snare spell, and Drer and Tom the chance to hit in melee as much as they need to. There we go. We're going to now switch over to uh, using Thorn Snare here, while the attacks continue without any interruption. There we go. And that enemy is now held in place, and also there are some weird little um, sound things that go on when uh, Thorn Snare is activated. I'm going to have to take a look at that. We might as well use Thorn Snare there to make sure this enemy doesn't move. There we go. You are held in place. And you are also very, very dead. I think another Thorn Snare is needed. Not that spell, definitely this spell. While Drur moves back over here, and more attacks are launched there. And I think more attacks should be launched there. There we go. There's really no point in uh, overlapping the spell, just to uh, improve the amount of proficiency we have. That's the only reason we're really doing it. There we go. More spell casting. Excellent. And this enemy should be pretty dead soon. One more casting. There we go. And you are gone. 112 experience points. Not bad. We did go through quite a lot of uh, spell points on Syrah there. We could rest, but there's really no reason to, because uh, the rest of the party doesn't need to. So I think a few more Violet Potions should help. I think uh, two will certainly be enough. There we go. Are there any more encounters in here? The answer is a resounding no. Already with just a few encounters, uh, Thorn Snare is nearly up to half proficiency which is excellent because we need to get it all the way up to maximum. And there is a really good way of doing it. There is a uh, Cledo Camulos encounter there, so we're going to go uh, over there and say hello. This is also a good opportunity to uh, get some more bolt throwers and some more ammunition. As if you recall, we have run out of ammunition for the uh, bolt throwers for Harriet. We'll just launch an attack there. There we go. These enemies won't be going anywhere. There is a much harder encounter with the Cledo Camulos that we're going to be encountering soon. A very difficult encounter. And the studded leather is broken that he had. We're actually starting to break their equipment. And considering the fact that we weren't going to be uh, taking that item anyway, it really doesn't matter. Might as well launch some attacks in that direction, really. And you are now in, well, frozen in place because uh, you don't have much magic resistance whatsoever. So we don't need to worry about you resisting these spells. We might as well launch another one uh, against this enemy here, so that enemy doesn't move either. There we go. You just stay right there. Brilliant. 
you are most certainly not going anywhere, and uh, why not just launch another one right here? Well, it is wasting spell points, but it's not going to be wasting our resources later. This is an investment in the, uh, the very near future. These enemies may no longer be frozen, but they're not going to be moving anywhere anyway, because the uh, Thorn Snare keeps them firmly in place. And you are now gone. You can still uh, attack a little, though. There we go, but you can't move anywhere. Sometimes they can uh, attack, sometimes they can't. The game really is a little bit uh, shaky on uh, how that works, but there is a uh, bolt thrower here, one uh, bolt thrower, and another 20 ammunition. We really want that ammunition. There we go, and 7.5 gold will never hurt anyone by, well, will hurt them because we took it, but uh, they're dead, so uh, I suppose it doesn't matter if we take uh, that gold. There we go. The ability to concentrate has indeed returned, and with it uh, comes more spell points, which is brilliant. Anyone over here? There is indeed going to be someone over here. There's going to be you. And this is a very difficult encounter indeed. It is a selection of uh, six Cledo Kabulos three. Fortunately, we go first, which means that we're really not going to worry about uh, this encounter whatsoever. By the time that we um, have the Frost um, Avalanche effect fail, all of the Thorn Snares will be active, which means these enemies will be frozen in place anyway. There we go, and these enemies are probably going to be dead rather soon. A few critical hits would certainly ensure their doom. We want to start casting the Thorn Snares right here to make sure these enemies don't go anywhere. Actually, I think you need to focus over there. Melthus and Thunag, you just sort of stay there and do absolutely nothing. Uh, you could actually move up a little bit, but uh, I don't want to risk uh, the Thorn Snare not entirely working. There we go. You just stay put, doubly so. You're still alive, and you're also... no, you're gone. Right, we need to have uh, you focus your attacks there, while you use a Thorn Snare over here. There we go. Excellent. This spell is really good. Very good against single targets, if you don't mind uh, not dealing damage with the uh, spell in question. There we go, a few attacks here, and that enemy is also frozen in place by a Thorn Snare. Excellent. We're going to move up now. I don't know uh, how effective this is going to be at uh, preventing them from attacking, but we're going to find out, aren't we? We're definitely going to find out. We attack first there, and it doesn't seem like all of them can attack. That one's managed to attack. Ah, they are indeed attacking. But they are held in place, which is very... That one isn't, though. I think we're going to need to use another Frost Avalanche here, just to make sure that we uh, don't suffer too much damage. The uh, Thorn Snare is a little bit shaky in what it can do, but it does affect the final encounter in Kamulon, where, oh, well, you're dead, so uh, we don't need to worry about keeping you frozen in place at all. But uh, it does affect the final encounter, which means that um, we want to be using it as much as possible here to get it to a maximum level. How much we're going to be using it afterwards, I'm not so sure. Most of the enemies that we'll be facing uh, will, be, um, will be weak to frost spells as normal. There we go, I think uh, one more usage of this. It is already nearly at maximum, which is absolutely excellent. And we want to make sure that Harriet's attacking the right target there. There we go. You just stay right there. And staying right there is what you're going to do because you are dead. Also, that is a lot of uh, ammunition and bolt throwers. That is uh, quite enough to deal with the rest of the dungeon. We want to uh, pass some of these off there. I think uh, you could hold on to a couple of them. Let's see how many. Oh, you can hold on to absolutely loads of them, which is excellent. Every single one of these we hold on to is that little bit more money later on. And we want to uh, hand this over to Tom. We haven't really got that much uh, loose change lying around, but I'm not going to complain as after all, we uh, still have quite a lot of money in uh, item form. A little bit of healing here, and we're certainly going to be uh, using another one of those potions. We might as well use one of the ones that Melthus has here. There we go, a large part of mental energy immediately returns. It's quite a significant amount. And here is a much easier encounter to take care of. Just a uh, selection of a Cledo Camulos, not six of them, but only three. 
There we go, we'll just uh, have some attacks here and here, and some attacks here. The uh, Thorn Snare is very nearly at maximum level, it's not going to take that many more castings to uh, become full level. Which is good, because there are some really nasty encounters coming up which we really don't want to be practicing Thorn Snare in. We want to be focusing on dealing with them as quickly as possible. And you are still alive, you're not going to be alive for very long though. Not for very long whatsoever, we're just going to use a, a Thorn Snare there. You just stay doubly in place. Brilliant. Now we're going to defeat you. No, you're still uh, you're still active, which is a pity. But the other enemy there is definitely not going to be active. There we go. Just stay put. And now we're going to move forward and just defeat these enemies. Excellent. We could actually use the uh, Thorn Snare once more just to uh, make sure that we uh, get that to as high a level as possible. There we go. Excellent. And now these enemies have no ability to defend against uh, these attacks whatsoever. Not even slightly. We're just going to use a uh, ranged attack there. And you're now held in place even more. And you're ve oh, you're actually going to attack and that's the end of Thunag. That is the uh, downside of using the, um, the Thorn Snare. Sometimes it works and sometimes it really, really doesn't. There we go. And there you go. You are also gone. We have more um, more of these bolt throwers and more ammunition too. 21 more bolts, which is really good. And there we go with the, uh, the money, which is even better. We're going to use some magic here to uh, bring Thunag back, which is good because we need to bring Thunag back and uh, might as well heal a little more there. And now we might as well rest to restore a lot of spell points. Uh, Quite a few, but not all of them. There we go, a Violet Potion, however, will certainly uh, plug the gap there. And if you give me one moment, I'll be right back. Apologies for the interruption there, we are back, but Thorn Snare seems to make a strange kind of beeping noise after you've casted it a lot of times, and we have indeed used it quite a lot of times. This is the anteroom to the storage place of Baha'i Knowledge. We're just about there. We may be just about there, Thunag, but there are a few really nasty encounters that we're going to face, like you, for instance, which is one Magician 1, two Magician 2s, and three Magician 3s. This is a really good opportunity to finish off leveling off Thorn Snare, but it's also a really good opportunity to gain quite a lot of experience, and we're going to be doing that by uh, making sure that we defeat these enemies as efficiently as possible. There we go. One Frost Avalanche to keep all of them in place. We're going to be using the uh, Thorn Snares against the enemies at the back there, because this uh, front enemy is very likely to die almost immediately. One Magician 1 really isn't going to last very long against a selection of melee attacks, but managed to last for a whole round there. One Thorn Snare there, and we might as well let this uh, round of combat happen. And only a partial deflection from a Magician 3 there which is really good. We'll advance the party, and we'll use more Thorn Snare. There we go, a Thorn Snare over here, and we'll just let these enemies get uh, slowly whittled down. There we go, a lot of attacks there, and I think that was a miss on the ranged attack because we moved forward, which is a shame. And I think one more casting of Thorn Snare should do the trick. There we go, it should now be at maximum, which is brilliant. There we are, a few attacks there, and these enemies are now back to being unfrozen. We might as well use Frost Avalanche here to ensure that we uh, keep them all frozen in place. There we go. We're very close to the end of Kamulon. Very close indeed. There is another encounter, the uh, other one that's approaching us in this room, is a repeat of this one here, The uh, and these enemies are just gone which is really good because now we only have Magician 3s to take care of. And now that Thorn Snare is at maximum level, we can just focus on using uh, ranged attacks here. We might as well actually save all of our spell points on uh, Thunag and Melthus because uh, we want to make sure that we can uh, use that against the final encounter. And the final encounter is indeed a difficult one. Well, it may be a very difficult one. We've just done a lot to, to make sure that it's a lot easier. 
Thorn Snare is definitely going to help us out. That enemy is uh, not defeated yet, this enemy isn't either, and neither is this one. Now they're all back to being unfrozen. We're going to use a uh, Frost Crystal here to ensure that none of them can do anything silly like run away or try to uh, cast any spells. There we go. You're frozen, and you're frozen, and you're frozen. Three freezings for the price of one! What value? You're still standing, and you're not standing anymore. There we go, we'll just uh, get some uh, ranged attacks here and here. There we go. There's a reason why I'm not using our uh, the bolt thrower ammunition, by the way. That's because there really isn't much need to, considering the fact that um, all these enemies can be easily defeated, and we might as well hold on to the bolts for... Um, the leather armor is broken. We weren't going to be picking that up anyway. But hey, it's nice to know that we're finally breaking equipment. Well, it's not nice if it was, say, a bolt thrower that we were breaking, but this enemy is pretty much doomed now. Yep, and doomed that enemy was. We're going to very quickly move out of the uh, sight radius of this uh, enemy over here, because we don't want to get attacked by that foe whatsoever. I don't think that enemy is going to be uh, able to navigate around the statue, which is really good. But hey, this door is going to lead to the final encounter of Kamulon, and we're going to make sure that we're as well prepared for it as we can possibly be. There we go, we'll use that there, and we'll use this here. And when we come back, folks, the final encounter of Kamulon. Once this encounter is done, we'll be leaving here and we will never ever return. Remember when I said that you need to make sure you get everything that you want the first time round? You definitely need to make sure, because um, you don't get another chance whatsoever. But hey, the last area of Kamulon, and the last room of the last area of Kamulon. Soon we shall see the green lush environments of Albion once again. Soon. Very soon. And I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then, later.